Now that we're able to get an individual product from the store by its ID, what if the product is not in the store? Well, then we'll need to make an API call and get the individual product by its ID and then add it onto our store. And that's what we'll set up in this video. The steps we need to complete to make this happen is very similar to when we were loading in a list of products. We need to set up a few actions to load an individual product. We'll need to set up the effect. And then we'll also dispatch an action that will update our store. So we need to complete these three steps. Let's start with the actions. Back inside of our products module, open up the action file, the effect file, and the reducer file. We'll start inside the actions file. And what we'll be doing is very similar to what we did here. But instead of loading a list of products, we'll be loading an individual product. So right below this, I'm going to add another comment just to break everything up. And the first action we'll create is for loading an individual product. So this will be called load product. We're going to be dispatching it from the product view component. And we'll be passing in an ID as the payload. The second action we're going to create is for dispatching from our admin product page. And I call this load admin product. And we're dispatching this from the product item component page. And we're passing in the same payload, the ID. Now, if we're successful at loading an individual product, we'll want to handle that. So we'll create an action called load product success. And we'll dispatch it from the product effect file. We'll be setting up the effect file pretty soon. And we'll pass in the product that we get. If there's any failures, we'll create an action for that. And that will call load product failure. We'll also be dispatching that from the product effect file and we'll pass in the error as the payload. That will be the type of any. And this is what you want your action file to look like. Now we're ready to move on to the effect. Let's open up the effect file. So we set up our four actions. Now let's set up our effect. So this effect will call our backend using our service. If it gets an individual product, we'll dispatch our success action, updating the store with the product. If there's any failures, we'll update our store with the failures. What we need to do within our effect file is almost exactly what we did here. We'll be using the same service. Also, we'll be calling on the same action file. So we're already bringing that in. So right below here, I'm going to add another comment. This is going to be for loading an individual product by its ID. So I called it load product API effect. And the effect is going to be almost exactly what we did above. So I'm going to call it load product. We're calling on the same service. And we're calling a different method called get product. And we're passing in the ID. If we're successful, we're dispatching the load product success and passing in the product. If there's any failures, we'll handle that as well. There's one more thing we want to do is we want to listen to a second action as well. The load product and also the load admin product. Make sure you add that on. And make sure you select the load admin product, not the one with the S. So if any of these actions get dispatched, this is what we're going to do with it. Now let's update our store. So when we successfully get a product from our service, we're going to dispatch our success action. And we'll update our store with the action. So we'll need to create a couple on methods to do that. Inside the reducer file, we should already have one of our on methods created, and it's this one right here. So we're going to use this add one, and that's how we're going to add an individual product to our store. But we're not going to be using this add product. That's what the boilerplate gave us. I'm going to be using the load success or the load product success action we created, and it's this one. And this action passes in an individual product. And that's what we'll pass on into the add, on, add one method. And that's how we'll add an additional product to our store. We'll want to create one more on method. And this is going to be for the failure. So if there's any failures, we'll update our store with the error. And we already have that error property up here, right here. Now, there's a lot of actions we're not using within our action file. At the end of this module, we're going to go back and clean them all up and re remove any boilerplate code that we're not using. And that's all we need to do within our reducer file. Now that we assembled all of our pieces, we created our actions, we set up our effect, and we set up our store. Now we're ready to start dispatching actions. Let's open up the components we'll be dispatching our actions from. 
we can close down all three of these files. We won't be back in any of these, and then we'll open up our components. So the two files you want to open up is the product item TS file. I'll open this up, and then also the product view file, the TS file. And we'll start inside the product item page. And the first thing we want to do here is import our actions we just set up. I'll add that at the top. So whenever we want access to our actions, we'll just call on this. Next, you want to make sure that you're bringing in the store within your constructor. And we already set that up in the last video. And now we're ready to dispatch our action. So what we set up in the last video is we check to see if our store has the product. If it doesn't, then we're going to dispatch our action right here. So let's call on the store. And, and then we'll dispatch our action and we'll call on the from product actions we just brought in. And in this case, we're going to call the load admin product because this component is for the admin section. And then we'll pass in the ID. And our product ID, we already set that up as well. And that's this product ID. And that's all we need to do within our product item page. Let's jump over to the product view component. And we'll do almost the exact same thing. We'll need to import our actions. And then double check to make sure that we're bringing in the store. And we already have that set up. And then within this if statement, we'll dispatch our other action. So we're calling the store. We're using our dispatch method. And we're using the load product instead of the load admin. And we're passing in the ID. So we're pretty much doing the exact same thing. And that's all we need to do for dispatching our actions. Let's fire up the application. So I'll open up the command line and run npm run dev. And we'll check it out in the browser. Let's go into the shopping page. Now we shouldn't see much of a difference when we click on this view button. It should go into our store and get the product from the store because we already have a list of products within the store. To see that, let's open up our debugger and go in here and then if we go inside of our store we have a list of products so it shouldn't make an api call to get a product if we click on this and it doesn't so we see a bunch of actions being dispatched for our navigation but we don't see any action for loading an individual product that means it got the product from the store now on the other hand if we refresh the browser we'll see a big difference we'll see an action being dispatched for loading an individual product. The reason was when we refreshed the browser, it cleared out all the products from our store. So it had to go and make an API call to get the individual product and add it to our store. If we look at the last action that was dispatched, the success, look at the action, and here's the payload. That was the product we selected. So this is the product we got from the back end. And if we look at our current state, we now have that product within our store. That's great for the shopping page. Now let's check out the admin page. Now I was looking at this earlier and here I'm getting an error. So if we click on the individual product, that works just fine. If we refresh the browser, we get redirected back to the home page. The reason for that is the auth guard is blocking us because the user is not showing up as admin. And that's a real quick fix. Let's take care of that. Let's open up our admin guard, and that's inside of the auth module, resources, and our admin guard. So what's going on here is when we refresh the browser, we're trying to find out if the user is the admin from the store. Well, the store hasn't been updated yet. So what we'll do is we'll get the user from local storage instead, and then we'll have that information immediately. So what I'll do here is get rid of the store. We don't need that anymore. Get rid of this up here, all these imports, clean it up a little bit. And then I already made a snippet and I'm just going to replace this whole entire block right here. And I'll add that in here. So now we're getting the user from local storage. And I'll make sure I import the user. And we're checking to see if the user is the admin or not. If the user is not the admin, then we'll just send them back to the home page and return false. So in other words, you can't go forward. But if they are the admin, then we'll return true. So now everything should work correctly. Make sure you save the file. And let's check it out in the browser one more time. Back here in the browser, we should be able to test the admin section now. If we go into the admin products, 
and our guard is working just fine and let, let us in. And then if we go to an individual product, open up the debugger. Now when we refresh the browser and we wipe out all of our products, we should make an API call or dispatch our action to get another product from the backend. So let's try that out. So if we refresh the browser and it goes and it gets a product from the backend, I can tell it's working. And then if we look down here, we see an action being dispatched and we successfully got a product from the backend. And if we look at our current state, we now have that product within our store. So the action that we're dispatching from the product item component is working great. Now you might notice we broke all of our effects. If we go and refresh the browser, our spinner is not working correctly. Let's take care of that in the next video.